let me tell you a little story about a guy named Anders. Hey, Mom. Keep it down. Anders wants to book a three-day weekend of shows for his band this winter. He's sending out emails to venues and DIY spaces he found online. Dear venue person, my band, Hideous Eclipse, a two-piece death noise rock metal band, is looking to play a show in venue location on Friday, December 20th, 20XX. It'd be awesome if you could help us out. Also, would it be cool if we crashed there after the show? Here's a link to our music. After a few weeks, Anders hasn't heard anything back from any of the venues. After fuming in private for a few days, Anders goes online and berates venues and DIY spaces on social media for not booking his band. Several years later, Anders, cynical and bitter, dies alone in Hideous Eclipse's old practice space, wondering why the world never wanted to book his band. The end. Cool story, bro. Tell it again. Let me tell you a little story. So where did I go wrong? Well, your first incorrect assumption was that anyone wanted to listen to your band in the first place. Our bands and songs may as well be a fleck of sand on an infinite beach stretching to the horizon. You know, something people just randomly stomp over right before they dive headfirst into the ocean. There's no shortage of music in the world. It's really easy to make music. Music has no value. I find what you're saying to be highly offensive. Your email is a classic example of a taker. What's a taker? Someone who takes things. I don't do drugs in the sense of give and take. I don't do drugs, man. The venue is the giver, potentially giving you a place to play, some sort of payment for the draw that you bring to the venue and a place to crash afterwards. I thought that's what venues do. To add insult to injury, your music is valueless. You wanna take all this value from the venue owner, but you have no value in return to give. But my band is amazeballs. We're God's gift to noise death rock metal. The value is that this venue can say they booked the greatest band in the world. Everyone thinks their band is the greatest band in the world. Before we were huge. Let's take a look at another email you wrote in an alternate universe where you thought about value before you emailed the venue owner. My band, Hideous Eclipse, a two-piece death noise rock metal band, is looking to play a show and venue location on Friday, December 20th, 20XX. Based on our social media analytics, we've got some fans in the venue location area who we emailed and can confirm for the show. We've also reached out to local bands, Local Band 1 and Local Band 2, who have played the venue before and are down for playing that night. If you have a pre-order ticket system, we can promote that to our fans as well. Okay. This is looking better. You've got some fans and friends in the area who can come out to the show, as well as pre-order tickets if necessary. And you've also contacted some local bands who've played the venue before, so chances are they know the venue owner and that will guarantee some local draw. Also, you've basically brought the venue a full bill, which makes it easier on their end to book out the night. But how did I get the local bands interested? Either through social media or the venue's website, you checked out some bands that are local to the area, or have played the venue before to see if they would match with Hideous Eclipse's genre, and if they did, you contacted them. Keeping value in mind, here was Anders' proposition. Dear Local Band 1, My band Hideous Eclipse, a two-piece death noise rock metal band, is looking to play a show at local venue on Friday, December 20th, 20XX. I see that you've played there before and are local to the area. I think you'd be a good fit for the show we're hoping to put together. Would Local Band 1 be available for that date? Also, we're bringing our amp and drum kit and don't mind backlining the show. We're from hometown and could trade shows whenever you want. Here's some of our upcoming dates you could jump on, local show dates, or we could book something else. I've got some friends we're staying with in venue location, but you're more than welcome to crash at my house if you come through hometown. Damn, Anders sounds like a cool guy. He's got his own place to crash, he offered to backline the show, he offered for local band one to play hometown, and if local band one plays hometown, they've got a place to crash? Wait, what? Dude, I'm right here. Booking shows is all about the give and take, Anders. If you have no value to provide the places you're attempting to play or the people that you're attempting to play with, no one will ever book your band. You may get an occasional bite here or there, but you'll eventually just phase yourself out of the scene entirely. Wait, am I supposed to be dead? Cool story, bro. Tell it again.